enjoyed telling the story. I uh, hired into Ford Motor Company in, uh, in, in May of uh, 1964. They started uh, sometime in April or February, uh, or March or February of, uh, of, uh, of 64. They started the production in the Dearborn assembly plant of the early Mustang. It was actually 64 and a half. It was, it was a, I think it was, a lot, I think they were all titled at 65s, but there was a difference between the 64 and a halfs and the 65s uh, in, in the two model years. But uh, I hired into Ford in, uh, in May, as I said, went to work, uh, not later than the 1st of June. By the middle of June, I was in the Dearborn assembly plant uh, as a uh, young uh, 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 intern from the uh, automotive assembly division, uh, chasing quality problems with vendors that were all over the country uh, for the parts that were being sent in. And I would go there and f figure out they would have a problem, a problem report. I would figure out what the, uh, what the, 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 uh, the uh, uh, corrective action was, and uh, somebody would tell me what the correction action was. And then I'd go out to the vendor's plant and uh, exercise that, uh, that, that, that uh, customer prerogative. And uh, so that was, I bought a 64 uh, and a half Mustang, uh, actually uh, ordered it before I knew I was going to go to work for Ford in, in April, just, just after they went on sale in the dealerships and uh, took delivery of it. I actually didn't get it till, till up in uh, the end of June, the 1st of July. Possibly was in the Dearborn assembly plant working on quality problems when my car went down the line. Jack's a hard guy to get to know, uh, and can be uh, a very uh, he can be a very closed off, cold uh, guy. But if you if you earn his respect and you work really hard and your heart is in the right place. There's no one I've ever known that is more warm and cares more about you and cares more about helping you achieve your goal than Jack Roush. He's an incredibly loyal guy that, uh, loyal to a fault, uh, really, to be honest with you, when you get to that point. But that doesn't happen real easy with Jack Roush. Ever since I started racing, for Jack, he's always uh, provided us with anything, you know, we've asked for um, within reason. I mean, if we had a good idea, and, or even if it was a bad idea, and we wanted to build something else, and we had a good case for it, why we thought it would be better, um, you know, he's never never shot us down and told us we couldn't do that, it was a waste of money or whatever. So that was, uh, uh, that was one of the cool things when I first came and worked here, working for Jack, is, you know, you'd ask him how much it cost to a cup race and he said it doesn't matter you know whatever it, whatever it took to win that's what we we're gonna do I think all of us in this business you know the, the fact of the matter is we take risks and um, you, you know the rewards in life are based on some form of what risk you take you know is this gonna work out is this gonna be a deal maybe one of them's not a deal maybe one of them is so uh, you know Jack knows what it's like to take risks on and off the racetrack um, and it was uh, you know, somewhat of a risk to take Benny Parsons' word solely and say, hey, that kid in Vancouver, Washington will do you a good deal, you know, do you a good job. And Benny said the last person that he recommended uh, to someone for a job was Ernie Irvin. And I you know, took a lot of pride in that to be number two, uh, second person Benny had recommended to somebody for, for an opportunity. And, uh, I felt pretty special about that, and I'm glad Jack, you know, took Benny Parsons up on it and gave me an opportunity. If I had to describe Jack Roush in one word, it would be dedicated. I mean, he is, is dedicated to, to the sport, to this team, to Ford, to us drivers. Uh, he, he cares about what goes on here and, and our performance, and, and he has his hand in everything that we do. When Jack Roush hired me in at the end of 2002, he had a, a, a blank white truck, no sponsor, and he committed to me that he would run me for one year, regardless of, of whether we got a sponsor or not, that, that he would run me for the entire season. And that commitment was huge. It allowed me to, to relax a little bit, realize, hey, I've got a little time to figure this out. Um, you know, I'm not on the hot seat every week. And that was a huge commitment. A, that kind of that kind of commitment is what he's doing still to this day. He's running, you know, um, cars that, that whether or not they've got sponsors for young guys coming up, 
He ran my 99 Cup car for 14 races in the end of 2004 with no sponsorship. I mean, in the Cup Series, that's a, that's a huge expenditure. And the goal was to get us to the position we're, we're in now, for me to get experience and for us to get sponsors like Aflac and, you know, and Kellogg's and Subway. And, and I think that, that that meant more to me than anything, that, uh, that he was willing to take a chance on a guy like me. Jack is, is a racer, first off. Uh, he's at the racetrack on practice days, qualifying days. He's in the engineering meetings. Uh, he's not the, the team owner that just shows up for the victory lane photos. So it's neat to have Jack around. Uh, he's very passionate about it. Um, that means he's always watching over you, too. So uh, Jack's, a, uh, Jack's a cool guy. Um, you know, his family's great. Uh, things that, um, that, 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 you know, his character, things like that, uh, you know, make Jack stand out uh, amongst maybe some of the other guys in our sport. But it's cool to be a, a Roush racing guy. Anytime you get an opportunity to, to make it to what you feel like is the is the pinnacle, and which would be NASCAR, any of the series, the the Camping World Truck Nationwide Cup, um, is a huge opportunity. And uh, I remember the day, you know, I'm working in my shop. Uh, I had a race shop and built built cars and sold parts and ra raced all my own equipment. Uh, you know, I remember the day they called and said, "Hey, do you want to come race the the Camping World Truck Series uh, for Jack?" You know, and I had to kind of pinch myself, you know, and said, uh, sure, you know, didn't have to think about it long. And, you know, that was kind of the start of it. I got my opportunity there and uh, raced the, the truck series for three years, 98, 99, 2000, won the title there, moved to Nationwide, and was able to capture a title there and still hunting the, uh, the Cup Series. I mean, I certainly didn't deserve the opportunity when it was presented to me. And uh, Jack, uh, you know, is, is not afraid to take a chance on someone that, that hasn't been proven. Um, I remember my first year at Roush was 2006, uh, running some truck races. And a lot of those guys that I uh, worked with on the Craftsman truck team that uh, were over at the Nationwide shop back then, you know, now they're at the cup shop and they're, uh, they're doing different things. The engineers on uh, several of the cup teams today were, were brand new raw engineers back in 06 and 07 uh, that, that didn't really know anything about racing and now they're, they're uh, the, the lead engineer on, on a cup team that's winning races. So that's very cool to, uh, to see that and, and I think that the true racers uh, in the garage uh, respect that part uh, of Roush Fenway Racing. He's a tough little guy and uh, he will take you to task. Uh, sometimes he takes you to task just to see just to see, uh, you know, what you're made of, um, and uh, you know that's uh, he, he's a real special guy in my heart. You know, um, I will I will always have an emotional, you know, tie for him um, that I won't have with anyone else in in, in racing.